Today we're going to learn about PocketBase, an open source backend that feeds a real-time database, authentication, file storage, and an admin panel in just one file. All you have to do is download the file, run it, and you're done. You get a fully fledged backend. That is what is called PocketBase. It's like Firebase or Superbase, but it fits in your pocket. It's made in the Go programming language, and it's also very extensible as we are about to see. And just like Firebase and Superbase, it has a JavaScript and Dart SDK, so we can integrate it with our JavaScript frontends and Flutter apps. To use it, all we have to do is download the executable file, which is available for Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. Then, after extracting the contents of the file, we navigate to the resulting folder and run the file called PocketBase with the command serve. That will start our backend and give us two URLs. One for the REST API that is generated automatically, and another for the admin dashboard. Clicking on the admin dashboard will take us to a screen to create an admin account. After we are done with that, we will be taking taken to see our only existing collection. A collection is a type of data. By default, we have the user's collection created for us. Users can have an ID, username, email, password, and other fields. We can create them right from the admin panel, or we can use the auto-generated API. The auto-generated API also includes authentication using username and password, social providers, email verification, password reset, and more. If we navigate to settings, we can see all the auth providers that PocketBase supports, which are many. Because because our apps have more than just users, we need to create more collections. If we were building an Instagram clone, for example, we will need a post collection. For this, we click on new collection and create a new post collection. We will choose the fields, which in this case are going to be a file named photo, a text field called caption, and a relationship to the user's collection to connect a post with the user that uploaded it. When we press save, PocketBase will run the migrations for us on the SQLite database. And we will see the posts collection in our admin panel where we can add a new post manually, or we can see the documentation for the auto-generated API to search, view, create, update, delete, and even get real-time updates of the post. Before we see how to talk to the backend from a frontend, let's take a look at some of the extras of PocketBase. It comes with a super nice log space where we can see each request made to our server. We can search and filter logs, and we can inspect them individually. In the settings page, we can customize the email templates used for user verification, password reset, and email change. We can also connect an SMTP email server for better email delivery. By default, when a user uploads a file, it is saved on the same server where PocketBase is running, but we can change that if we want to upload the files to S3 on AWS. We can also create backups, configure auto backups, and choose to upload them to S3 as well. We can export and import collections, which is very useful if we are working on a testing environment and we want to move to production. We can configure tokens, change their expiration times, or even invalidate them all. And we also have a page to manage the admin accounts that have access to the dashboard. Now let's create users and let them upload photos from our frontend using the JavaScript SDK. Okay. Signing up a user from the front end is incredibly easy. All we have to do is import the pocket based package and point it to the URL of the server. In this case, localhost. Then all we have to do is gather the data of the user. And finally, call the collection users.create on the pocket based instance and we are done. The API is very easy to remember. If you have another collection called tweets, for example, all you would do is collection tweets that create with the data of your tweet. Super easy. If we now go back to our backend and refresh, the user will be there. To request an email verification, all we have to do is call the collection users request verification function. That will send me an email that looks like this with a button that after clicking it will take me to a verification page. Now in the backend, our user will show up as verified. Next, we want to log the user in. All we have to do is call collection user users auth with password function. We can pass either a username or email and the password. If the credentials are correct, we can console log the base model, which is the current logged in user that would look like this. The login process could not be more easy. PocketBase handles all the password security, cookies, tokens, all that. But now that we have a user and that the user is logged in, it is time to create a post and upload a photo. Because we're going to upload a file, we will use the form data API. Our post requires three things. The caption of the photo, the ID of the user that uploaded it and the photo file. We will add the caption using form data that append. We will do the same for the user field and we will get the ID of the user that is creating this post from the base model, which is the current user that we saw before. Then we will select an input and a button from our page. We will listen when a file has been selected on the photo input and when it is, we will add it to our form as the photo field. And finally, we will listen for a click on the button where we will call collection post that create with the form data. Before we can try it out, 
we have to go back to our collection configuration and have to modify permissions. By default, only admins can perform, create, and read. We will click on each rule, which means anyone can do anything. Pocketbase has really cool security rules that allow you to protect each operation on the database. But for now, no permissions is okay. After we do that, it is time to test what we built and see if it works. I will drag a photo I want to upload and press upload. If we go back to the admin panel and refresh our post collection, we will see that it works like a charm. The photo file was uploaded correctly with the file we selected and the user is connected with the user collection as well. Because the database is also real time, we can subscribe to get updates when a post is added, edited or removed. All we have to do is write this code. This will listen for any actions in our database. And if any action happens, we will console log the type of action and the record that was modified. To test it out, I will delete a post from the database. And as you can see on the console log of the client, it says delete lost the data of the post that was deleted. It does not get any easier than this. Pocketbase is amazing. Now let's talk about what happens if we have a requirement that is outside of the create, read, update, and delete operation, which we are for sure going to have. Extending Pocketbase is super easy because instead of running the executable file, we can use it as a framework. This is what an example Pocketbase application looks like. Here we import Pocketbase as a package and we initialize a new application and save that on the app variable. From here, we can add hooks, which are functions that will run when something happens or talk to the database directly, change templates and more. For example, we can add a hook that will run when someone lists the records in our database or after a record on the posts database is deleted. These are just some examples, but there are event hooks for everything from listening to record changes to a settings change, an email sent, a file download, etc. You can also add new routes if you need them, like in this case where we are registering a slash hello route, for example. You can also perform database operations manually if you want to. You can extend everything from Pocketbase, from event hooks, routing, databases, template, login, testing, and more. Check out the documentation to see how extensible it is. I really like Pocketbase and I want to put it to the test on a side project to see how it performs. And that is why I have a question for you. Why don't we think of a project with real-time features that is not too hard to build? I will then build that project with Pocketbase and deploy it to a cheap server. Then we can all go to it at the same time and try to fry the server to see if Pocketbase can handle us all. If the idea sounds good, let me know in the comments what do you think we can build. And if enough of you think it's a good idea, I will build it right away. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Your subscription means a lot to me. It motivates me in creating quality content every week. So please don't forget to hit that button. Thank you for watching as always. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.